is 7 o'clock. So I will call our Tuesday, June 7th, Common Council meeting to order. Megan, will you take the roll, please? Davis? Here. Britton? Here. Bartz? Here. Lick? Here. Smith? Here. Schmidt? Here. Wetzel? Here. Romling? Here. All right. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We put a new computer up here, and I'm a little concerned that no sound is coming out in, in the room, because I did not hear the, this is not being recorded thing. Um, we didn't hear the public works either. Okay. It didn't speak in public works. Either. Rich, do you want to? I heard it. There we go. I heard it. We got it now. Rich, can you say that one more time? I heard it. Perfect. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. So the first item on our agenda is the minutes of the council meeting from May 17th. Does anyone have any comments or corrections to those minutes? All right. Very good. Our next is comments and suggestions from citizens present. I do believe we have at least one. Go ahead, Mr. Berg. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor McFarland and uh, council members and uh, city staff members. I I wanted to come to, to ask a few questions, and to, but you're not you don't have to answer them because I know that's not your format. But I do want to raise a couple of comments, and hopefully it'll help you in your discussion tonight. Um, but before I do, I came here intentionally a few minutes early, thinking there would be an invocation prior to because when I was on that council for 18 years, uh, fairly consistently we did have an invocation. From uh, and I'm I'm hoping that's just an aberration and it's just a, a night when they don't have it. But I hope the practice was not discontinued because if it was, that was a mistake. But again, I'm just raising the issue. I don't know. I've been here a few times and I I haven't seen it in action. But it's an important small area of uh, making our our council and our community special and unique. Um, anyways, that said, I want to say that I, I went to your uh, finance committee on, on May 9th and I was real pleased with a lot of the discussion and the action taken at that meeting. That's a month ago now. And I heard things that were very, uh, very good to hear in regard to uh, issues of importance for our town. Uh, one of them obviously had to do with uh, our Main Street and ideally doing something with that for the next six years to improve its look uh, for people going through Again, whether it's um, uh, local residents, whether it's businesses, whether it's um, uh, anybody that actually is uh, considering our town going through, we want to give a favorable impression. We can do that with that improvement. And I understood at the last finance meeting that that appeared to be a consensus. But I don't know. I went through our uh, website uh, for the city. I got the minutes I looked at. Uh, and it appears to be obviously pretty accurate on what occurred there. Um, <clears throat> and it does make reference to... I think that our, um, our Mark Stevens is going to give an updated spreadsheet, but it in, seems to imply that it's going to be at the next finance meeting. And I don't know, but I went through the meeting, um, and I went through the agenda, and I went through everything I could online. I didn't see anything for the council as a whole to get an updated spreadsheet of that ARPA funds and the status of those funds and, and just the status of, of uh, where that's going. Because we have $2.5 and I know a portion have been used, but there's still a, a large amount available. And I'm not clear, again, when I look at either the minutes, and then I did look at a, a resolution, your last one tonight, and it has to do with a, an amendment to the contract with Wolf Paving. And it looks like you're adding $202,000 to that uh, previous contract, and it does, you're amending it in ways that I, I think are good because I, they may incorporate the intent of of doing work on Main Street, which I understood was your intent at that uh, finance meeting. So I just need to have that clarified. Hopefully the people on the council will ask those questions and or the administration and or, or the mayor can give clarity to that topic prior to voting on to make people clear about the intent again on that topic. This is June, and I, because of that, uh, we got about three months of really getting things done when it comes to road projects, three, three, maybe four months. But we have to obviously get things going in an active way. I know we already are, 
But I don't know again on that project, so I'd like to just get some update on that topic. Uh, the $410,000 I liked, you were going to basically uh, mill off two inches, you were going to uh, lay down, uh, overlay two more inches on it, and you were going to address the, the parking areas with a seal coating, a patching, and a uh, crack filling type of method to hopefully make that look decent uh, for the next five, six years. And that, that method is cost effective. It will do a lot of good. It'll benefit our town in a great way for people, again, that are, that are using our city or evaluating our city as a place to do business or live. So it's important, and I, I think that's your intent, but I, I'm not clear by looking through the things I did. Um, the ARPA dollars, again, are, are important because they are right now like one-time dollars that we have available, and they can target and provide very direct benefit in a way that we maybe can't directly do through our budget because those dollars are allocated for a lot of particular uses, and this is actually one-time type targeted dollars that can actually provide benefit. And I'm, again, concerned because I want the image of our town to improve and get better so that the people evaluating Watertown for all those other reasons are going to have a favorable impression, and these dollars can actually do that if used right in, in, a, in a good way. And I'm just encouraging you to ask those questions and to see what you can get for an update on that topic. I, see a lot of discussion at the finance, but I, I need to make sure, and I'm just encouraging you as a, as a citizen, that the full council has the same awareness of these details that uh, the people on the finance have. I'm uh, aware of uh, Alderman uh, Fred Smith and Jonathan Lampy. I know the two people. I know they're going to have a good impact in a positive way to make our council better, uh, you know, better than it is in its own way because I know their backgrounds. I know what they can do. And I, I want the council to be active and strong and, and, and aggressive on trying to address the issues because these times we're in right now are important for us to have momentum. And, you know, it's, I can see momentum. I talked about it at the finance meeting, that we have examples that are obvious. Individual entrepreneurs in the downtown area, they're doing things to make people proud. But, and I know the, the, the library project is huge and big. I know the on the river project, and I know the area on, on First Street, um, on the first block of uh, West Main, where I was part of. I know that's going to have some benefit. But it is not enough to create the momentum that we need to have. So we have to, we have to do a lot more than that to make things happen. And I, again, I, I looked at uh, a few things that are important just to, to be aware. And I, I looked at our um, single family homes and you know, where we're at as far as that topic. And, I, and I, according to just calling over at, um, at our city hall, I got the information of 13, 13 new uh, permits for single family homes for 2022 so far. Uh, last year it showed that we had 33. In 2020 it was uh, 31. Uh, in 2019 we had 29. And, uh, and actually in 2018 we had 28. Again, those numbers are very pedestrian and average. They aren't the things that we need to do to create the momentum that we need to have because we know we lost population in the last census. In 1,100 people, that's a big number, but it can be overcome by momentum. And it has to do with creating uh, you know, new housing because we heard through pre uh, presentations that our existing housing is older and dated and we need to replace that with new homes in Watertown. And that's where there needs to be some abilities to create incentives somehow. Two years ago, I, I mentioned to you in Waterloo, it's a small little town. It obviously isn't on, uh, on the example of Watertown on population, but they did, a few years back, they did a wave impact fees for sewer and water. It is having some impact and some benefit. There is some new construction in a, in a decent way comparatively on the size of that town of Waterloo. So I'm just encouraging you, whatever it's going to take to actually create the momentum residentially so we can have growth, because with growth, you're going to have, you're going to have new uh, homes, which are going to have property valuation, which are going to add to the tax base and create the benefit of new dollars to work with as a council that we don't have now. We need that growth. We have to find a way to do it. And maybe um, uh, our mayor and maybe a sub, a sub part of the council can be targeted toward uh, addressing those issues and finding ways to create the momentum. I'm just giving you ideas and examples, but it is important. And when I talked about uh, at the last uh, finance meeting, the, the ARPA dollars that are available through the American Rescue Funds, 
I emphasize streets because of their importance on improving the curb appeal, the image, the look of our town. And those are very direct, obvious ways of making our town look better. And that's an important, and, it, and it's obviously for local residents that have to use our streets on a continuing basis. It, it improves the image and makes them feel better about the, about the maintenance of our town. And, and that's just, again, an, an important little variable that should be front and center of what you're looking at when it comes to, um, to trying to you know, make a difference, create the momentum that is so important for our community. So hopefully, if you can, just address some of those issues maybe uh, under that resolution on wolf paving and or there's other discussion on the, the minutes for uh, the last finance meeting. Maybe some of this can be uh, clarified at that time, but I'm wanting you to just hopefully make this uh, a sense of urgency because we, we have uh, our mayors here for three more years and we have three years to target to make very active change imp improvements to create the momentum that's going to make our town uh, a viable option for people to live and do work and to, uh, to come here for business. Those three variables will make a big difference, but we have to create that momentum. It's, um, it's important. I saw a business on South Church Street. I was involved on the, on the leasing up and the management of that property. Uh, it just sold. Uh, 20 years ago on South Church, there's a uh, Church Street Plaza. It's actually a River Place Center. And 20 years ago, it sold for $4 million. And it just sold in the last month uh, for $1.1 million. Those aren't good numbers. And, and, and it was sold in an auction type method, which again, bothers me. And I had a conversation with that new owner and he lives in California. And I don't know his level of being active to try to make that plaza into something meaningful, but it's in front and center on South Church Street where everybody goes by at some point in time, typically in their day or within a day or two. And we need, there's a 50% vacancy. It needs to improve its status. What are we gonna do to make that happen? I mean, I had my chance, I was there for six months and then it changed ownership and this guy has got a different method and I may be involved, may not. But I'm trying to just point out the examples here that show that we are uh, struggling in different ways and I want it to be moving forward and I don't want us to be stagnant because if we're stagnant, we're basically moving back. I want us to have the momentum that we need so that in three years we can actually say that Watertown is really on a move and is actually doing the things we need to make, make, our, make us proud as local residents of, uh, of the momentum that we all want to happen. In, in our town, but thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berg, I'm not gonna speak too much back, but I do believe Alex informed you that June 16th is the next finance meeting for ARPA. Okay. Yep, um, and you can connect with me to set up some time. I agree with your ideas so much, it's pretty much all Alex and I do every day. Thank so you. happy to chat with you about those. Anyone else that would like to comment? And I don't see anyone else online, so let's move on then to our public hearing. Uh, we have a public hearing this evening to consider the discontinuance of a public way pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 66.1003 for an unopened public alley right-of-way. Um, this is pertaining to the City of Watertown Public Library and it is for the north 10 feet of the west 44 feet of Lot 8 of Block 39 in our original plat of the village which is now the City of Watertown. I will open that public hearing. If anyone would like to comment, you can come to the microphone. All right, we'll close that public hearing. And then let's go to reports. You all have the Airport Commission from May 11th, Finance from May 9th, Historic Preservation and Downtown Design from April 20th and May 25th, Library Board of Trustees from April 14th and May 12th, the Licensing Board of May 10th, the Planning Commission of May 9th, the Public Works Commission of May 24th, Public Safety and Welfare from June 1st, the RDA from April 20th and May 18th, Site Plan from May 23rd, and Tourism from May 12th. Any comments, corrections on any of those minutes? All right, we have no old business, so then let's go to communications and recommendations. There is a fresh list of committee appointments on your desk, and considering the committees that these are on, um, I would look for your motion to approve these appointments. Motion to approve. Thank you. Motion by Licht, second by Bartz. Anyone have any discussion or comments on any of these? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, our next item is recognition of our outgoing alder people. We have two this evening. And the first one we'll do is Karen Went. Thank 
can join me. <laughs> all right, alder person. So I thought this was cool because I got to write these. Um, so this is what I had to say about alder person went. Alder person Karen went was a wonderful member of our city council. She was always fair, made common sense decisions, and was well prepared, which is something that I can tell you all of my team greatly appreciates. Um, Alder person went managed her committees with the demands of running and working with multiple small businesses and always challenged myself and her colleagues on the council to remember that balance. One of the first meetings Alder person went was at, I remembered she asked, and I'll be curious to see if you remember this, <laughs> do we really need that new ambulance? I remember it. Now, I don't think she asked that question because she didn't want to purchase an ambulance. I think she asked it from the perspective of a small business owner and one in the automotive industry. I think she wanted to ensure that we got the value out of our existing fleet that she would expect from her customers. And I think she wanted to ensure that we were purchasing only what we needed, not just what we desired, just as she does for her businesses. Her balance and steadfastness was very, very valuable. So much so that I asked Alderperson Went to serve as the council representative on the new fire station committee. Alderperson Went was just as steady and committed to her values in those meetings as she was in all of her other commitments. On a personal side, Karen is just plain kind. She always greets people with a smile. She provides a compliment whenever you need it. Trust me, I'm missing the compliments <laughs> on my outfits. And she asks the follow-up questions that really demonstrates to you that she cares. Like she'll say, how's your son doing, if she knew he was sick. On behalf of the city, I thank you for your willingness to serve, your ability to balance your commitments, and for the kindness that you always displayed. Please join me in thanking Alderperson Went. Thank you. <laughs> Alder Person Wagner. Alder Person Cassandra Wagner was a fantastic alder. She was the much needed voice of human resources on our city council as we navigated difficult issues like updating a pay plan, reorganizing public works and finance, or reclassifying positions. She was deeply resourceful to us in that work. In addition to her HR perspective, Alderperson Wagner was also a studious member of our finance committee. She was always well prepared. She asked thought-provoking and insightful questions and would always find the smallest of details to question or correct. Those things may sound like run-of-the-mill attributes, but I can assure you all they're not. The preparation, research, and commitment that Alderperson Wagner provided to this council is not something that you see in every elected official. Alderperson Wagner carried a heavy committee load and did so as a working mother of two young daughters. I know a thing or two about the weight of that responsibility, and I want you to know how deeply appreciative I am to you and to your family for making it work so that your talents could benefit our city. You were fair, balanced, and steadfastly committed to, the respons to responsibly moving this city forward. Alderperson Wagner, I thank you for your willingness to serve and to serve as strongly as you did. I look forward to your continued service to this community, whether it be on a committee or through your other volunteer efforts. Please join me in thanking Alderperson Wagner. And then we're going to bring up her fam too, Lisa, if you want to, you don't mind staying for one. Coming up, girls. If we have kids actually come to a council meeting, we bring them up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get many children here. Yeah, Sorry, breaks things. <laughs> We've been very fortunate in the last uh, my my going on my tenth year to be able to have some really good older people. So it's an honor to honor them. Um, our next item is a North 4th Street uh, 2023 resurfacing project update and public information meeting. I'm going to turn it over to our public works director. I will read uh, the out scope of the work and then we'll open it up to questions. And we do have our consultant Ryan Trzinski here this evening that can help field any questions that you have. The North 4th Street project is from Jones Street to just south of the Rock River Bridge here in the city. The purpose of this project is to improve the existing roadway infrastructure along this route. North 4th Street provides access to numerous businesses and homes throughout the neighboring area as well as access across the Rock River. 
The existing concrete pavement has experienced deterioration through significant cracking and settling of the concrete pavement, which provides a rough driving experience. Proposed improvements include milling three inches of the existing concrete, placing a new asphalt pavement, spot concrete patching, and roadway pavement marking, including painted pedestrian crosswalks. It is anticipated that the North 4th Street will be closed and remain open to local traffic only. The public will have access to the bridges on North 2nd Street and East Division Street to cross Rock River. No new right-of-way or easements are anticipated with this project. Infrastructure improvements shall remain within the existing curb and gutter limits. This project is funded through the federal bipartisan infrastructure law funding and administrated by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. It is 80% federally funded and 20% city funded. At this time, we'll open it up to the public for any questions or comments on this project. So we're required to have a couple of public information meetings. We did one during the week last week, and this is just another item, another opportunity for that. Do you have anything? It's going to be completely closed to the public because I thought you said that there would be access to the businesses. It will be closed to through traffic, but it will always be open to local traffic, meaning if you live within the confines of the, the, the limits of the project, you will have access to your business in your homes. But if you want to go through that area, let's say, to get to the quick trip, it's closed. And the only concern that I expressed the other day when I came down was that, that the ambulance does come through quite regularly to get to Mark I don't know if it's, but in, and of course the hospital route going down division, those were the only two, you know, really main concerns. That right, I and we'll be evening. coordinating with the chief on that. And looking online, it's Rich, Alex, and Ryan. Right, all locals. Yep. Anyone else that has any questions? You all can ask, yeah, no, Mr. Schmidt. Can you pull down your, yep. I didn't know if we could ask questions. So. Yeah, yep. So you mentioned that the infrastructure underneath is going to be subject to necessity, uh, necessity, I think. Is any of the stuff under the pavement, below the scrape, due for replacement, like the piping or any of the water mains, any of that stuff due for replacement? Is all that newer? No, this is not a reconstruction. This is strictly a resurfacing project. The confines and limits of getting this application uh, sent in and approved and getting the project completed was not sufficient time to do full reconstruction design. It only left time uh, for design for resurfacing. So we're anticipating that everything below ground in theory should last the length of what we're resurfacing? Correct. And uh, right now the uh, water systems manager is looking at uh, the potentiality of getting design and construction done yet in 2022 to replace water main in that section. Well, the pavement's out of the way. The pavement will not be touched till 2023. Okay, I just want, I'm just trying to figure out how we can, if, so we're not duplicating work, we're not. The biggest complaint I get when projects like this come up is we fix something, make it look nice, and like within a year or two, we're ripping up sections or having to redo it because something underneath of it needs to be addressed. That's so. true if it's a resurfacing project. If it's a reconstruction project, all the utilities are being addressed at that time, but that is always consistent with any resurfacing or seal coating project. Um, if there's a utility need, that'll always be addressed. It just depends on what you're looking for in your goals when you're redoing the roads. In this case, it's resurfacing. You're trying to get 10 more years out of that road before reconstruction is needed. Okay. Anyone else? I think it, another thing that what I heard just being in the community was the concern about the 4th of July parade and that it was going to be finished before. Yes, yes, that is in the, the confines of the project that it will be completed in time for the 4th of July parade next year. Yeah, oh, for next year. Jane Ellen, are they taking down any of the trees along 4th Street at all? Is that Ryan, I don't believe we're removing any trees, correct? No, there's no tree uh, removal planned at all. Because we're keeping it between curb and gutter. There will only be working between the curb and gutter lines, so it shouldn't affect trees. That's correct. Thank you. Yes. Sorry about the microphone here. Huh? Um, you mentioned that there's a few other steps that we have to do to uh, uh, get the federal funds pure. How, how far along in the overall process are we uh, with this hearing and with everything else? I think this is the only other item we have to complete. We had to do two public information hearings. Yes. Yeah. Th that's the homework on the city part. Ryan, our consultant, has jumped through many, many hoops in the past um, 
almost 60 days to uh, keep this project moving forward. The other, only other uh, to-do list on the city's list is we have to do, um, it, it's a federal requirement that when you do a street project that you update and make sure that all of your intersections at your sidewalks have current ADA, uh, they meet current ADA standards. And so the city will start this summer working into this fall on making sure that all of the ramps and the crossings uh, and the stretch that this is being improved are uh, improved and made to current standards. That is a requirement on the city and we must have that completed prior to construction starting up on this project. Ryan, am I, am I capturing everything that is the city's responsibility prior to construction? That would be correct, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Our next item you. is a town square update. And it looks like we'll get that from Alex remotely. Yep. Thank you, Matt. Um, so basically, at the uh, last RDA meeting, um, conversation was had uh, on the RDA board felt as well as other than written and other that it would be good to start providing council with some construction updates as we go through the town square project. Um, so since this is the first of these, uh, I'll just kind of um, do a very broad stroke overview of where we've been. We started construction back in April. Um, over the last two months, uh, it's all been basically uh, seawall work. So work along the Rock River there to get sheet piling in, uh, dead man anchors, so that we could get that sheet piling tied back. Um, and actually just today, we completed that work along the water. We pulled our turbidity barrier, and um, Michaels, who was a contractor for that work, basically backfilled, and we'll be getting our equipment out of there. Um, also today, we started site grading, um, which we're scheduled to start tomorrow, so we were able to get in this afternoon and start a little bit of that, and then um, over the next two weeks, we'll have some utility work going in there, essentially stormwater piping, things of that nature. <laughs> I'm constantly reminded of how much of this project will be underground and invisible to the general public after it's all done. So the final finishing touches, when we start to get some structures up there, it will all go really fast. Um, but this stuff that's not visible um, is going to take a little bit of time. And um, we are slated to, uh, we had initially outlined a, a project schedule that would end us in uh, completion in mid-October. Um, that seems to be on track at the moment. I'll be getting an updated <laughs> construction schedule from Moss Brothers uh, just before next week's RDA meeting on Wednesday. Uh, let's see here. I believe that covers most of it. Um, so, again, the next two weeks will just be more site grading, site development, and then uh, putting in some utilities. We will be burying, as part of our project, the utility lines in front of the library on Water Street. Those are both at t lines and the energy lines, and those are slated to be done, uh, I think we have a window between June 13th and July 8th. Again, they're uh, coordinating their availability to try and do that work all in one fell swoop. So it's exciting. I'm sure uh, you've seen the, the big backhoes and equipment along the river. Those will all be moving out, and um, we'll see the next phase over the next couple of weeks. Anything you guys want to add or any questions? Yeah. I'll just add, uh, Alder Bartz and I are on the RDA, and uh, like Alex said, this topic came up in the RDA just to make the whole council aware, Then, and by default, everyone that watches the council meetings aware of progress going on down at town square so um, hopefully we'll be doing these uh, every meeting or every other meeting just to keep everyone up to date on, on how the progress is going and and so far so good, good. anything else on this one all right thanks alex we have no new no, business let's go to the accounts madam mayor i move we pay all accounts payable motion by romley second by wetzel discussion on the accounts Ronline? Aye. Lambie? Aye. Written? Aye. Burks? Aye. Lick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Motion passed 8-0. All right. 
Uh, next is miscellaneous business. You have the payroll summary from May 4th to May 17th. Comments on that? All right, let's go to licenses. We have quite a few this evening. Um, the first is an application for temporary Class B and temporary Class B license for the American Legion uh, for the July 4th celebration at Riverside Park. Um. I move for the adoption of the uh, or the approval of the license okay, for motion. the Legion. Motion by Smith, second by Mr. Romline. Discussion on this one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, next, let's go to the, uh, item two an application for a Class B malt and liquor for DNR's Poorhouse, doing business as Poorhouse at 200 South 3rd Street. I'll move to approve this license. Thank you. Motion by Ritten, second by Bartz. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, next is the application to transfer Class A retail license for sale of fermented malt beverage and or intoxicating liquor from 118 North Water Street to 200 West Main. This is for Pine Hill Sustainable Farms. Move for adoption or the approval of this license. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Seconded by Mr. Bartz. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, our next item is um, an application for permanent premise amendment to include our outdoor 20 by 40 fencing area at the Watertown Moose Lodge. I'm wondering if we should take first a motion to approve and then a motion to table. Okay. What? A motion to approve. Well, this item, go ahead. Um, well, I will make a, a motion to uh, bring this to the floor uh, for approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second by Lampy. So this item was tabled at licensing board um, just to do a little legwork. Yes. So I would be looking for a similar. Yep. I would make a motion that we uh, table this until the appropriate time it can be removed mm -hmm. from the table. Okay. Motion mm -hmm. by Smith. Second. second by Wetzel. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Good. Okay. Our next one is an agent change for Moravian Homes doing business as Mark Ward Village Town Center. This is at 1045 and 1035 Hill Street and 1042 and 1043 Perry Street. And we're making that change to Jennifer Johnson. I would move to approve the agent change. Thank you. Motion by Bartz. Seconded I'll by second. Ritten. Any discussion on this one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Next is an application for a permanent premise amendment to, in, to include um, an outside fenced area at the Tipsy Goose at 601 North 2nd Street. Move for adoption. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Second by, oh, second by Wetzel. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, next is an application for a permanent premise amendment to include the warehouse at La Rosita of Watertown. Alondra Perez is the agent. This is at 309 South 3rd. I move to approve that application. Thank you. Motion by Bartz. Seconded I'll by second. Ritten. Comments on this one? Mr. Lampy. When you say warehouse, how large is the, uh, is the new uh, hmm. facility? I don't know that I know that offhand. Do you? I think it's still contained within their building. Though. It's just they're storing it in a different yeah. spot? Yeah. Okay. It's still contained within the building, though. So it's a gratuitous term that it, it's a warehouse as right. opposed to a room. Right. Yes. Are you saying yes to that? Okay. Our deputy chief is saying yes. <laughs> Suppose you did an inspection. That makes some sense. Any other comments? Good question. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, let's go to item eight. And before I call item eight, we are going to take the, the A, B, C, D separately. So the first is um, to amend a liquor license renewal application due to an improper amendment of premise uh, pursuant to um, or to the state prior to the license premise. The first is for Riverview Water Trap. And if um, now I'm going to refer us to the handouts that Megan provided as a result of licensing board. see where we can get to. So about a halfway through the page, it says this is to amend a liquor license or new application. Um, am I missing where you 
So just to state their prior license. So we would be looking for a motion um, similar to the motions we're looking for at licensing board? Correct. Okay. So they submitted for a premise amendment that the licensing board did not honor. So the recommendation from the licensing board is to issue a license based on the premise, so the area that they had licensed on last year's application. So that would be the motion that we're looking for. Mr. Smith. Make a motion to um, approve this license based upon the prior licensing premises. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Second by Bartz. Does anyone have questions on that or say we're going to do the same thing for the next one? So, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, same story here for Best Western. Um, we would be looking for a motion to approve the license premise that was approved on last year's license. Um, I would make a motion, uh, same motion as for um, the water tap, that the uh, approval of this license be uh, based on the prior year's premises. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Okay. Second by Written. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. And we do not need to take any action on items C or D. Do we need to? We're fine at no action, right, Stephen? Correct. Okay. All right. Our next is an application um, operator license for Nicole McCarthy. You will see in the write-up from Megan that this was recommended for denial by the licensing board. I would make a motion that we deny the application for this license. Okay. Motion by Smith. Sorry. Second by Bartz. Questions? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Next is going to be a separate exhibit that um, was on your desks. Um, I believe we'll take each. Are we taking exhibit A in totality or individually? Okay. All right. So I would look for a motion to approve the license renewals in exhibit A. Make that motion. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Seconded by Lampy. Comments or questions on this one? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And then next is the application for license renewals for secondhand article and jewelry dealer, dealer licenses, and this is Exhibit B in your packets. And Mayor, I'll move for Exhibit B. Thank you. Motion by Ramline. Second by Bartz. Questions? Comments on that one? These are the annual renewals, so. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? This has got to be one of the longest council agendas. Four pages. Making sure I'm not missing anything as we go. So we have no res Oh, I must be missing something. Okay, next is our ordinances. Uh, let's go to ordinance 22-54. This is an attachment of real estate by boundary adjustment for the town of Emmett to the city. This is here for me and the plan commission on the second reading. I'll move for adoption of ordinance 22-54 on its second reading. Motion by Ritten. I'll second. Seconded by Licht. Questions or comments on this one? Megan. Ritten. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Licht. Aye. Smith. Aye. Smith. Or Schmid. Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Motion passed 8-0. to All right. Next is Ordinance 22-55. This is to amend Chapter 550 of the Zoning Code through the creation of the accessory land use, non-residential accessory structures. This is also here for me and the Plan Commission on the second reading. Move for adoption of Ordinance 22-55. Thank you. Motion by Smith. Seconded by Ritten. Comments or questions on this one? Megan. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romlin? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Britton? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Lick? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. Very good. Next is Ordinance 22 56. This is to amend Chapter 532, the floodplain and shoreland westland zone, I should say wetland zoning, through the removal and addition of language to Section 532 16A. This is also here for me and the Planning Commission on the second reading. I'll move for 2256. Second. second. Motion by Wetzel, second by Romline. Comments on this one? Questions? Megan. Wetzel? Aye. Romline? Aye. 
Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Parts? Aye. Licked? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? <laughs> Aye. Very good. Next is Ordinance 22-57. This is to amend Section 500-6A for and for parking limitations in the city in our general code of ordinances. This is here from Alderman Smith in Public Safety and Welfare on the second reading. I move for adoption of Ordinance 22-57. Thank you. I'll second. by Smith. Seconded by Schmidt. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Discussion? Well, question. Yes. Um, I guess just why? People are going to have questions. Just why is that? Why to be honest, I don't know the answer to that one. Go ahead. Er, go ahead. I'm finding. Go ahead, Jane Allen. Um, this ordinance and a couple other that are on for the second reading tonight pertain to our South Third Street project last year, and this one removes two-hour parking on South Third Street for a portion, and it was added as we were able to do research. It was the Lindbergh uh, yeah. uh, building, and it was a business, uh, manufacturing business. They had the two-hour parking to um, deter. Mm -hmm. Uh, employees from parking in a residential area. Now that that has been torn down and is no longer functioning as a business, um, is requested. I believe I, Alderperson Bartz brought it forward from a resident request that that be removed now that it is strictly a residential neighborhood. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? <coughs> Megan. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romline? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Parts? Aye. Licked? Aye. Motion passed 8-0. All right. Next is Ordinance 22-58. This is to amend Section 500-6B, Print 2, Parking Limitations. This is also here from Alderman Smith and Public Safety and Welfare on the second reading. Move for adoption of Ordinance 2258. Thank you. Motion second. by Smith. Second by Wetzel. Discussion from anybody on this one? Megan. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Bart? Aye. Lick? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. Next is Ordinance 22 59. This is to repeal and recreate a portion of Section 500 8A, heavy traffic routes in the city of Watertown. This is here from Alderman Smith, Public Safety and Welfare, on the second reading. I caught you. Oh, okay. You can read mine. <laughs> Motion to approve 2259. <laughs> Motion by Licht. Second by Bartz. I think I might be getting red in the face. You got me. Any questions on this one? I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, once again, the why. You on this one? Okay, this removes um, the traffic, uh, the truck traffic from the section on South Third Street between Hart and Highland. Again, because with uh, Lindbergh no longer being, they're having their business and the structure there, there used to be entrances on to South Third Street in that corridor. With the business gone, there is no need for that section to remain in truck traffic. We did check with Diversi and with Rice Industries to see if they needed that area as a truck traffic, and we never heard back from Rice, but Diversi explained they don't use that section. Their trucks go on um, on Hart Street. So um, again, it was asked that it be turned to more residential. Other comments or questions? I know one truck driver who used that, but I guess he won't anymore. He'll rename, he'll, he will remain nameless. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else on this one? Aye. Lick? Aye. Oh, did it again. Lick. That wasn't me. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> he did tell me he got a lot of coffee before our meet and greet, so maybe that's what it was. He was excited. Aye. There we go. Was that from? That was Schmidt. Smith. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to Schmidt. Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Motion passed 8 0. Thank you. All right, next is Ordinance 22 60. This is to repeal a portion of Section 500 9A, parking prohibited in specified places. Again, from Alderman Smith, <coughs> Public Safety and Welfare, on the second reading. Move for adoption of 22 60. Motion I'll by second. Smith, seconded by Schmidt. Any discussion? Megan. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Lick? Aye. 
Motion passed 8 0. All right. And then our last one this evening is Ordinance 22 61. This is to create Section 500 6A, Part 2 Parking Limitations in the City of Watertown General Code. Again, from Alderman Smith, Public Safety and Welfare, on the second reading. Motion to approve 22 61. Motion by Licht. Seconded Second. by Mr. Wetzel. Any discussion on this one? Megan. Licht. Aye. Smith. Aye. Schmid. Aye. Wetzel. Aye. Romline. Aye. Lampy. Aye. Written. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Motion passed 8 0. All right, let's go to resolutions. Our first is Exhibit 9392. This is a resolution to vacate the alley right of way known as the Western Entrance to the Public Library. This is here from me and the Planning Commission. I'll make a motion to approve Exhibit 9392. Thank you. Motion by Written, seconded by Lampy. Questions? Mr. Smith? No? Oh, do you have a question? Okay. Comments? Are we fine with a voice vote on this one? Vacating a right of Let's just take the roll to be safe. Go for it, Megan. Written? Aye. Barks? Aye. Lick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Motion passed 8 0. All right. Next is Exhibit 9393. This is a resolution to enter into a lease agreement for the purposes of operating um, our Watertown Park and Rec Cart Park program. This is here from Alderman Licht and Park Rec and Forestry. Motion to approve 9393. Thank you. Motion oh, by second. Lick. Second by Bartz. Comments on this one? Questions? All these happy smirks. We're not going to be able to have fun before <laughs> meetings together if we can't get it straight here. <laughs> all right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Awesome. Let's go to our next, which is 9394. This is a resolution to submit our um, Transportation Alternatives Program grant application for the Tivoli Island Bridge Study. This is here for me and the Finance Committee. I'll move to 9394. Thank you. Motion by Wetzel, seconded by Romline. Questions or comments on this one? Mr. Ritten. Uh, just make a comment. Um, in the Finance uh, Committee meeting, we learned that that particular bridge is the oldest double bowstring bridge in at least the state. Mm -hmm. It's something pretty historic, pretty cool. So this is a grant to help fix it up. Thank you. Okay, that was my question. Is this to fix it or to get somebody to look at it and tell us it needs to be fixed? Because I was a little concerned that that's a lot of money. Just have someone tell us it needs to be fixed. I'm not uh, sure. I think it's to do the study, correct, Jean yes. Allen? Yes. Yes. Of what needs to be repaired? So they'll do it as. What will be covered under the scope of this grant is that the bridge will be inspected and there will be determination of historic significance and a recommendation of what repairs are needed to bring it back to its uh, useful purpose. Okay. So it's $32,000 to have someone tell us what's broken, how to fix it, and the historical significance of it. Correct. That seems outrageously expensive. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, I have, tell you to, to, it's a it, small it, bridge. I can tell you we do a lot of bridge inspections in this neck of the woods and it's not expensive. Yeah. Only because I've seen a ridiculous amount of bridge stuff. It, it's the I cost of doing business. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it, but trying to justify the, that to people is going to be this extremely difficult. This is an 80-20. Yes, right? correct. 80-20 or 80-20 grant. 20 it's still tax less. money. Yeah. Just different pots of money. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, I get it. It's government. Got it. Well, it's it's an it's a very historic bridge. Yeah. So that's cool. Any other comments or questions? Let's take the roll. Wetzel? Aye. Romling? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Lick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. Great. Let's go to Exhibit 9395. This is a resolu resolution to submit the TAP grant. Uh, application for the bike and pedestrian path network plan. This is here for me and the finance committee. Madam Mayor, I'll move for 1995. Thank you. Motion by what? Uh, excuse me. Motion by Romline, seconded by Wetzel. Discussion or comments? Questions on this one, Mr. Ritt? Uh, comment on this one. Um, another, another grant for another study to make a plan. Once that plan's in place, that will free up future grant money for uh, suggested improvements. It helps our grant application to have this plan in place before submitting those future grants for those future improvements. Okay. 
Anyone else on this one? Again. Brown line? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Written? Aye. Bart? Aye. Lick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? No. Wetzel? Aye. Motion passed seven to one. All right, next is Exhibit 9396. This is a resolution to submit the 2021 Compliance Maintenance Annual Report from the Wastewater Treatment Plant. This is here from Alderman Wetzel and Public Works. I'm afraid I'm going to fix. Thanks. Motion by Wetzel. Seconded by Lampy. Discussion or comments on this one? Pete stuck around for the whole meeting. Praying someone would ask one. <laughs> uh, this is just an annual check the box with the DNR, essentially, right? It is. A, yeah. Pete, would you like to answer that question? Sure. Uh, I mean, since you're here, so. Good. Could you repeat your question? I'm sorry. Essentially, it's a check the box with the DNR. We submit a report annually. It's a reoccurring event. Yes, this is every year we have to do this report. It's a snapshot of the previous year. Uh, on the performance of the wastewater treatment plant, including our maintenance of all the equipment and our programs we have in place, um, all the capacity maintenance uh, for monitoring the collection system in addition to the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Did, did anything surprise you in the report? Uh, well, we had an 90% ex exceedance in the influent um, BOD loading um, for two months of the year. That was the first. 90% um, of our plant design, there's a lot of different ways to explain the treatment plant and the capacity of the plant, the way that it's built and constructed. There's flows, there's loadings, um, and there's other things as well. So we had a 90% exceedance of design, but the plant effluent was uh, well below permit. That's really where we look at is our effluent limits. Um, the loading coming in can vary greatly. And we actually tracked down after we had those results what the problems were. Uh, we believe, and we had already started making corrections on them uh, last December. So that continues right now. But all numbers are good now. I called Pete today. I had a question for him. In the uh, future planning, he had to describe future projects coming to the city. And the uh, first one listed was install new inceptor sewer for Highway 26 bypass west side interceptor. Words I have no idea what they mean, really. And I thought, and it said $25 million. And I said, Pete, is that someone, a clerical error, someone typed an extra zero? He said, no. So just the cost of what's looking at the city, $25 million for a... Interceptor? Thank you, yes. West side interceptor, west of the bypass. I was just, it just I thought it was $2.5 million, but it's $25 million. And that, the cost do you want to city. explain that a little bit? Yeah, the yeah. West sure. Side. Yeah. And, and that's on, um, in the report, I don't have page numbers with it, it's on future planning. Um, that's in a section on financial management. And so the, the DNR asks us to list projects, and some of these we know, and some of them are wish list things. Um, they're trying to get an idea of where we stand uh, financially to support such projects. So the West Side Interceptor was studied back before they constructed the wastewater treatment plant in the early 2000s. And there's a gradient break there along the highway, which we all know there's a big hill, and uh, we're confined on the inside. The sanitary sewer uh, was built out as such where it cannot support additional growth on the west side for a variety of reasons. So the biggest one is the gradient change there and the elevations. So the west side interceptor was planned and looked at to provide growth on the west side of the bypass and then trans. Uh, convey the wastewater all the way to the wastewater treatment plant. So part of the treatment plant upgrades included uh, interceptor sewers to collect that over by Zern on Jefferson Road. We call that a uh, south interceptor. Um, the west side interceptor project could have gone uh, like I believe two different ways. Um, one of them required a lift station, the other did not. Um, both of those were very expensive um, projects. Um, that was looked at and identified as a need for future growth. So the year 2026 is just, it's there. It doesn't mean that that's when we expect to do that. It would be dependent upon growth. It would definitely be dependent upon growth. It's a very expensive project and, you know, we've had discussions internally and shared that report. I actually have a copy of that report. If anyone would like to, to look at that, you're more than welcome to. Uh, there's a lot of charts and graphs, and but the summary uh, is, is pretty good. And it explains our options and, and the reasons why. Um, 
that west side interceptor would be needed. Why don't you just, just for the people that are not familiar with this, tell them how big that pipe is going to be. How, how large would the interceptor pipe be needed for the west side interceptor? Uh, I want bigger than 36 inches. Interceptor sewers are rather large, and then they have the main collectors come into the interceptor. The interceptor, we would hope, would be all gravity. That would be preferred, um, but I'm not sure if that's completely possible. So it would be big. Our largest pipe right now, I believe, is a 64-inch on Hoffman Drive. Some of our interceptors are 36. Um, the one that it would connect to is a 36-inch interceptor on the south side of the treatment plant. Three feet, that's a big pipe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, just hit me, uh, just as a layman, mm -hmm. we, we throw around 2.5 million, okay, but then I saw 25 million and it's like, wow. What a just decade so, ago, I was in 2044 and it was 13 million um, huh. for phosphorus maybe, and the 13 million wasn't even gonna get us to compliant. So I, get, I know what you mean. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, a mini substation almost on the west side of town. Yeah. Okay. And we want to build inside 26. Don't go outside 26, so. <laughs> right? I, it's not up to me. The preference, and our, I don't know if our small growth plan, how that lays it out, but inside, on the east side of the bypass and within our existing boundaries would be preferred um, if we're talking wastewater conveyance. Uh, we have a system in place that can handle that. It could be up to you. You called a 6.30 meeting when we had pizza, so <laughs> it could be up to you. Fair. Fair Boss. point. Boss. Any other questions for Pete? <laughs> well, yes. you just made him the happiest wastewater <clears throat> manager because no one ever asked him questions on this report. <laughs> Jonathan? I, I will go back to the, uh, the, uh, the DOD, and I had, to look, I had to look that one up. That's, that's, that's an oxygenation factor, right? Uh, that's correct. Uh, so... The report says that we were above 90% of capacity for most months consistently. On the influent raw wastewater prior to treatment, yes. Okay, so again, can you, can you help us understand if that is a, a big deal, if that's a small deal, if that's something that would require like an equipment upgrade in the future? I mean, what, what does that mean? We believe the high influent BOD was a result of a line from the sludge pumps that malfunctioned with a valve. We have pinch valves and we have automated timers and big sludge pumps and they are, uh, have a big diaphragm. Um, we had some malfunctioning equipment and the line was leaking into the sanitary sewer within the uh, wastewater plant area and it was draining into our influent flow and that is some of our heaviest uh, concentrated wastewater at the treatment plant. In fact, that's where we want it to be concentrated. That's a very thick um, black sludge uh, that is made up of raw wastewater uh, by gravity settling and a return of activated sludge that we're removing from the process and then again settling. It's called the co settling. So, with the malfunction, we were not able to determine that it wasn't working because we go off of levels in the digesters and when we're dewatering and things looked normal and our testing looked normal. We saw high influent coming in and we thought it was a result of cleaning sewers or we had some issues somewhere in the collection system so we went on and were looking for it. And during the process of looking for it, we were doing internal cleaning and we popped some manholes and we saw black uh, wastewater coming in a manhole within the treatment plant and we knew immediately where it was coming from. So we went and we backtracked and we found the problem, we fixed the problem, and we put a flow meter in so that we could better monitor this flow because we don't have a flow meter. We're going by pacing of the pumps up and down in a calculated volume, which isn't as accurate as we would prefer. So when we put the flow meter in, we opened up the pipe, and we found in our six-inch pipe uh, that we have a uh, restriction in the pipe. So we have to go back and clean that out. That's where we're at right now, trying to get some high pressure cleaning. We have over 1,000 feet of this six inch line with um, 90s and 45 sweeps made of HDPE pipe, which are not gonna be easy to clean with uh, high pressure cleaning. So we're trying to figure out the best way to address that problem. Um, but we have stopped that heavy, influ or that heavy sludge coming into our influent that was mixing, which we have shown the numbers have dropped back down after we made those corrections. So that's what we think is where it was coming from, pretty certain. So I'm not concerned about it. Okay. <laughs>
All right. Well, I feel like we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Very good. Let's go then to exhibit 9397. This is a resolution to award the bid for the 2022 private lead service lateral replacement contract 9 22. This is here from Alderman Wetzel and Public Works. So moved. Every time, you guys. My turn. Go ahead. I'll give that one to Ramline <laughs> and a yes, second sir. by Wetzel. Questions on this one? Uh, Megan. Ramline? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Britton? Aye. Barks? Aye. Flick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmid? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Motion passed eight to zero. All right, let's go to exhibit 9398. This is a preliminary resolution declaring an intent to exercise special assessment powers under section 66 dash, excuse me, 66.0703.4 Wisconsin statute for the new sidewalk on East Main Street from Fairview Street to Oak Ridge Court. This is here from Alderman Wetzel and Public Works. I'll make a motion to approve exhibit 9398. Motion by written, seconded by Second. Mr. Wetzel. Discussion, questions on this one? This national assessment is like a new sidewalk going in that doesn't exist and we're just paying the land from the owners? We, it, it's the first step in order to assess the property owners for their share of a new sidewalk going in. It's two thirds, one third, two thirds us, one third them. Did I get that right? Two thirds property owner, one third city. There you go, other way around. Okay, so they, is they, do they have the say in the matter or is it already determined that they're getting a sidewalk? That's where we're holding a public hearing. There's a public hearing. Uh, somewhere down the road, but there's coming up in a couple weeks. There will be a public hearing, yep. So they'll get notified. Yes. Uh, okay. The property owners will be notified and right. then they come to a public hearing. Okay. <coughs> the sidewalk work is planned, but we would have to ha actually be able to assess them in order to, to do it as planned. Okay. So okay. Th just so we're all clear, what's the, the next step after this public hearing then? It goes back to public works and council again. So this evening it's brought forth as to whether or not to move forward or not. If it moves forward this evening, it will come to public hearing at the next council meeting. And then those comments from public hearing go back to the following public works uh, meeting. And at that time, public works will determine um, how much they want to assess and move it forward. Does it go back to council after that or does public works have the say on assessments? I believe that is, that, that, that'll conclude the, the discussion. Okay. Does it come all the way back here for the assessment? I think Stephen can check on that. Oh, go ahead, Rich. Uh, yes, it would come back for a final resolution on a final uh, assessment yeah. report. Okay, he's correct. He's yeah, correct. I yep. think it takes us to actually levy that yep. assessment. Thanks, Rich. Correct. So it gives approximately, give or take, 30-ish days for the people that have plenty of time to make their say on the matter. If it's got to go from I'd say ish, yeah. ish, yeah, because you got the meetings and back public and forth. Hearing. So we have a two week. We have to do a public notice, a legal notice for this, at, for uh, I believe with a class two. So it'll be advertised and give sufficient notice. And plus, um, Rich, do we send letters out to the affected property owners? We send letters to the affected property owners by certified mail and notifying them of the public hearing okay. and also a copy of the assessment report against their property. Okay. Mr. Wetzel? Um, we set a public hearing for June 21st, two weeks from the night. Okay. Then the next step is to, well, then it'll go to council on July 5th. Yes. Any other questions on this one? Megan. Written. Hi. Bartz. Hi. Licht. Hi. Smith. Hi. Schmidt. Hi. Wetzel. Hi. Romling. Hi. Lampy. Hi. Motion passed eight to zero. All right. Next is Exhibit ninety three ninety nine. This is a preliminary resolution declaring intent to exercise special assessment powers on Wisconsin Statute 66.0703.4. This is for curb and gutter replacement on East Water Street, fronting 202, 204, and 208 East Water. This is here from Alderman Wetzel and Public Works. 
We move to approve 9399. Motion by Barton. Second. Second by Ritten. Discussion on this one? Same thing as last. Same process. Okay. Different component. Carbon gutter. Yeah. I, I thought as per the uh, citizen comments, we may want to clarify uh, uh, whether or not this pertains to ARPA funds um, and also uh, with regard to some of the earlier language, we just want to state it in the resolution talking about the uh, figures that go up and down. So this is nothing to do with ARPA. What was the other one? Uh, basically, the first clause of the um, piece here, where um, the contract decreased by a certain amount. Oh, is that for the bituminous surfing with Wolf? I'm sorry. Where's I'm on 9399. Oh. Yep. Thank you. I was like, I know it's been a long day, but I really wasn't tracking on that oh, yeah. one. Okay. We've got two special assessments. That's why. Yep. Anything That's on 9399? <laughs> Next time we'll get Rosati's pizza. <laughs> Go ahead, Megan. Bart? Aye. Licht? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmid? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Ronline? Aye. Lampy? Aye. Britton? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. All right. Next is Exhibit 9400. This is a resolution to approve change order number two for the 2022 bituminous servicing contract with Wolf Paving to increase the contract by 202,851. This is here from Aldrin Wetzel and Public Works. I'll move for 9400. Thank you. Motion by Wetzel, second by Romline. Mr. Lampy. I'll, I'll start <laughs> saying what I just said. Um, okay. There's a, there's a first clause uh, as a part of the, uh, the change order that I think would be of interest uh, to some of the folks who, or one of the folks who came into public comment, which talks about uh, the, the original contract decreasing by a particular amount, uh, but then this work is being added back in, as I understand, um, on change order two, uh, basically, um, so there was an original amount, it looks like, that was approved by the council of about 1.2 million, and the final contract's about 1.1 rounding a little bit here. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, there's an opportunity to do some extra work, nothing to do with ARPA, uh, just basically an opportunity to reallocate some funds that were already allocated. Do you want to just explain what this one is for and the restructuring? When we brought the original resolutions for the Anna Street programs forward to this body, we did not have a number yet as to what specifically would be funded in um, 2022 Anna Street, just the way the timing of these came forward and the timing of when we find out what those final numbers are. So our indication was that the number was lower and so we had reduced the original contract to uh, be in line with what we believed the number would be. When um, uh, finance was able to do the carryover from last year and work with this year's numbers, we found out that we actually were money more to the good than we originally thought. And so you are correct. It gave us an opportunity to add back in work into um, this contract. And that is before you this evening is to um, uh, add more work back into the contract. And the work will be done on East Horseshoe and Endress Lane out by um, the West Side Industrial Park. And I think the, the other thing that kind of caught my eye here, if you don't mind me continuing here, is that there's a cost to share um, with uh, Clawson Correct. for this extra work as well. Correct. Yeah, so um, just working collaboratively to get a road in a really good condition and more to come. Clawson approached the city mm -hmm. and said, hey, we'd like to do this, we'll help out. Yes. They've been a good addition to the city. Yes, they have. Tremendous addition. Yep. And I, I mean, I feel comfortable saying this, and they refer, they reflect uh, a similar opinion of all of you. Like they, they very much appreciate the work the city does to support them and the, the expansions and the work that they have as well. So we'll have more to come on this one. Any other discussion on this? We better take the roll. Wetzel. Aye. Ronline. Aye. Lampy. Aye. Written. Aye. Aye. Lick? Aye. Smith? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 8 to 0. All right. Next, we have an opportunity for comments uh, from citizens present. Mrs. Rich. Nothing. Okay. With that, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Motion by Schmidt. Second by Lick. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right.
for those of you wondering, my niece was born during the meeting. Yep. She is six pounds, five ounces, born at 607 on 67. So her name is Elena. She's healthy. We waited a long time for her.